Hey everybody, it's Ty Warner with Kissoft, also Taika Engineering, Gleason Works, uh, you name it, in the realm of gear, engineering, I try and get uh, into all of it. So, in the past, you can see we've got some updates for Kissoft here, I'm just showing my Kissoft screen, this is my main user interface. In the past, you've been used to Kissoft doing rack and pinions okay so here's a rack and pinion gear set I'm just gonna open an example in the cylindrical gears we can go down here and we can grab a rack and pinion and if I run this and I want to see my system look at here I have a rack and pinion yep and I can have a helical gear set I can have um, you know those types of things however one thing I cannot do with this is I am unable to run this at an angle by meaning that I see I have a 90 degree um, uh, plane angle or intersecting axes of of the of the rack and the pinion right but let's say I didn't want to have an interacting or a 90 degree uh, set offset on these and I need to have something a little bit different if you're working on automotive rack and pinion or those types of designs and systems you would probably say well I can't run a 90 degree I gotta have something with maybe 30 or 60 degrees along that line well Kissoft did hear you and believe it or not they come up with a solution for that it is not in the rack and pinion module for a crossed axis rack and pinion it is in the crossed helical gears and precision mechanics worms right here crossed axis module that's what we're calling it okay and there's a couple things here that you can look at um, if I if I go into my graphics and um, for, for those of you new I'm gonna click a few buttons here and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a crossed axis so I grab this first one right there was a way you could do this in the past and what you'd have to do is You'd have one gear be your pinion, and then this other gear you would set as a not quite infinite, but maybe if this first gear had 10 teeth, maybe this one had a thousand teeth or something like that. And you'd try and create a large, uh, essentially a flat plane for that rack to mimic that. But we don't have to do that anymore. Okay. Now what we can do is we can simply go here to our define height of rack, this little plus button, and we can toggle this on and create a rack. Okay. And then in our details tab right here, we can go into the length of the rack and define that. There's also in 2020 a new example. So you go to go down to your examples, go to crossed helical gears, and you can see we have crossed helical with a rack. Now if I click this on, you can see this is already defined as a rack. If I change this, now it calls it a gear, 8,500 teeth, right? So, but I want this to be a rack, so I turn that back on, and it's a rack. And I don't know what this length is. I haven't really done a lot playing around with this rack and helical. But if I go in here to details, look at this. I can define the shaft angle. Here it is, 60 degrees. And I can define the length of the rack, 450 millimeters in this case. Okay? I can define my materials. I can define the reference profile for both. I can do tip alteration, just like I would on any other gear set. I can go into my manufacturing if I have um, profile modifications, right? I can put these in just like I've always been able to. My tolerances, I can define these tolerances as well in my center distance, um, the, the 2D reference here. So if I look at my graphics, 2D and meshing, come on, right here, I'll turn this back on. Okay, I've got to use a 3D for the contact pattern. So this is a warning you're going to get. No problem. I turn the graphics tooth geometry system. Okay. And here I have my 60 degree axis. And I have my, this is what we call our skin um, geometry. Okay. And the skin geometry is pretty cool because there's some things we can do with it. So I'm going to maximize this. Okay, now 
up here I have some buttons. I have these buttons here where I can uh, drive this gear. So if I turn it on, there it is driving on the rack. I can go the other way with it. And here, these guys I can I can do independent uh, rotation. And here's my properties. Looks like a little wrench. If I turn this on, I like to turn this up maybe 500 to the number of rotation steps. And there's a reason I do that. So if I now look at this and I try and run it, you can see how I get a much more um, uh, fine, uh, finer rotation, right? So I'm going to look in tight here. Get this back to rotate. I want to be able to see what those, I want to see this uh, interface. Now I can change this right here, my, my second gear independently. Oh, see that? Now I have a contact pattern on here, right there. And if I had crowning or other sorts of uh, micro geometry on here, I might see an ellipse or something like that. And I can always change this to even, you know, maybe a thousand. What does that do for me? I mean, we're going to make them both a thousand. Now what does it do here for me? Okay, so now I can kind of tweak this up a little bit. Um, but there's other things too here. I can change the shaft angle uh, adjustments. I can do center distance, inclination angle, those types of things. And now, now when I run this, I can even hit the, uh, and just hold that. I can see how these are going to roll in the mesh. Okay. I can run it the other way. Same difference. You see how that rolls in the mesh? This, in this way, I can, I can get an idea of what my contact pattern is going to look like. And so I might look at this and say, well, I've got some lead in back here, so maybe I do want to have some crowning to try and avoid something like this. And who knows what this needs to look like here, but I probably have a little bit heavier contact on that end. But that's not unusual for helical gears, right? That's why we put crowning on those. Let's see if we can turn this into a 3D solid. I'm not sure if we can. This is a newer module for me. I haven't done a ton with this one, but this is really cool that we can do it. If I go to my module specific settings and go to generation of 3D from a skin model, I go to a volume model and let's run this. Okay. 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 Boom. Now I have a solid 3D model. Those were just uh, warnings. They, uh, this is an example. Like I said, I, I haven't gone in here and tried to optimize anything, but, but here we have our 60 degree as we said, it was 60 degrees right here in details. Okay, that's our shaft angle. And we have our uh, pinion face width, our rack face width, and the types of things that we you know, put in here. So this is the way, or at least the module you would use, to define a non-perpendicular rack and pinion. So if you have rack and pinion design needs that require a non uh, a non-right angle drive, or you have some interesting angles you have to try and drive a rack with, um, go ahead and give Kiss Off to call Brian Stringer or myself, Ty Warner, and we can help you. We can either get you the software, and if, it, you know, if you don't want to buy the software, then we can for sure help you with your design in general. So we, we look at everything, and we, and we make sure we can do it. So rack and pinion with non-perpendicular drive characteristics. So offset angles and that sort of stuff. Kissoff can do it. It's a great software. If you haven't tried it, you can go to the website, kissoff.com. Uh, you can request a test license, or you can get a hold of me right on this website, provide an email, and I can send you a test license directly. It is free. It's good for 30 days, and it will provide all of the necessary uh, uh, permissions to do just about anything in the software. So thanks for watching. Uh, hope you have a great weekend.